I'm Alita and I work for the St. Louis Public Library. So thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, so there is my workspace. I already have one of these done for you to see. We're working in layers. So we're doing this lovely watercolor, or I'm sorry, uh, gouache. It's actually a print um, undersea French art deco uh, fantasy is what it's called. And um, I picked it because of all of these, there are a bunch of these beautiful prints that we have at the library. Um, this one, because it's mainly three colors is the easiest and we can just work in layers. We are not trying to do this exactly um, because we have an hour and that's just not long enough. But I just wanted to use like the um, layering technique. It's got just super simple um, curvilinear shapes, beautiful organic curvy shapes and flat colors, which gouache is great for. We're not gonna get too into like doing effects with gouache. We're gonna try to just do what it's really good at, which is um, vivid, bright, uh, flat, precise um, paintings. So that's why illustrators use it a lot. Um, so we're going to start with a layer of just a, a wash, like we did in watercolor, but with much less water. And then we're going to come in and lay down these background, uh, like seaweeds, basically. And then we're going to come in and go over that. You can paint light gouache paint over dark, which you can't really do with watercolor. Um, and do our detailed starfishes. Okay, so I am using just mixed media paper. It's pretty thin. You can use that or you can use like a watercolor. I have a watercolor pad um, or block here and it's really small. I'm gonna use that too, that's what these are. If you are using a thinner paper, you probably wanna tape it down, but you don't have to. I've split my page in two so that I have two to work on. I, I would suggest having two or three um, separate paintings going at once so that you can let one dry and then work on another and another, come back to this one, et cetera. Um, what else? We will, like, once we get these washes down, I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do with gouache that is, um, that's more like other painting mediums. You can do pretty much anything that you do with other paint, painting mediums that, uh, with gouache. Gouache is super versatile. So, take one of your tubes or two whatever you're, uh, whatever you're using. And um, I'm using these little uh, lids for palettes. Maybe you have a butcher tray as a palette, or maybe you have one of those cute, like ceramic or plastic, like tulip trays, whatever you're using, you just wanna make sure that you mix enough gouache paint for your wash to start with, because gouache dries and it's really hard it usually dries lighter or darker, depending on what colors you've used. And um, it's really hard to mix the same color again once it's dry. So you'll wanna mix enough to do your entire wash. Okay, so I'm going to do my ultramarine blue. For my background. So I'm going to just squeeze a little bit in there, like so. And then I'm going to add some titanium white, which it goes a really long way in gouache. So I'm going to use a little less of that. But titanium white is very, very opaque. Zinc white is less so. Because I already have a blue here that's basically just blue, white, and a little bit of green, I'm going to add another color to this to give this my second blue painting a little different, uh, just a slightly different color. So I'm going to add, let's see, 
Maybe I'll just make it darker and add a tiny bit of ivory black. So I'm basically adding gray. So it's going to be a gray blue. And that's fine. You totally don't have to do that. You could add a little green. You could just do blue and white. You can do whatever color you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. Like I said before, it's not about um, copying this thing exactly. It's about getting to know the paint and having fun with it. Got some paper towel here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, grab a paintbrush. My, I've got this dirty paint water already, but you'll see I have two, um, two jars of water that I'm using for painting and one for cleaning brushes. You can do this however you want, but it probably is best to have two so that you have clean water for painting. Make sure my brush is clean and then I'm gonna get a little water into it. So I have a brush sitting in my clean water that I'm just using to drop water into my paint. So I'm adding a few drops. Excuse me, what size brush are you using? Um, hold on a second. Um, so this is, this for, for dripping, this is just one of those bamboo ink brushes. Okay, but, good. But for my um, wash, this is, like just like a medium, it, I can't see the size on it anymore, but this is what it looks like. Thanks. It's not huge, but you don't want to use a tiny brush for a wash. You want to use a fairly large one. And soft bristles are good. Um, you can use hard bristle, bristles as well, but I'd say soft ones for your wash. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. And I'm shooting for like a creamy consistency, not too watery and not so thick that I can't move it around, but just like a nice creamy, um, smooth consistency. And you'll, you'll kind of know it when you get it. Uh, I think I'm there and you wanna make sure if you're using multiple colors, you'll wanna make sure to make them, make sure it's well mixed because you'll get streaks of color if it's not. So I'm gonna start laying this down. And I'm going to try to use, you know, just confident <laughs> strokes here. Um, it's okay if you get streaks and you'll know if you run out of paint and that's no big deal. You don't want to add a bunch of extra water because then it'll get streaky. Um, I want you to just be, uh, go easy on yourself because gouache is a challenging medium. It's great, but it's challenging. Um, I'm, you know, I mostly in my personal practice use oil and acrylic. So I know how to do this, but I wouldn't call myself an expert. Um, so just go easy on yourself. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So I didn't mix up quite enough. And so I've got these streaks and at the bottom of white, which reminds me of watercolor. And I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna leave it. It's totally fine. I have one up here that is covered well. I have one here that's drying that is, has this, um, I think, nice texture at the bottom. And so I'm just going to leave it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put my brush in my jar for cleaning. One thing that's nice about gouache, uh, among many things, is that if paint dries on your paintbrush, it's okay. It'll come right off. It's water soluble. Go ahead and take any color that you want to take. Um, I think this might be a good opportunity for me to use some of my um, little pan gouache, since I don't really want it to use it to mix color. And also don't worry about covering up your paint as it dries. A cool thing about gouache is that you, if it dries, if, if it loses its shine and becomes matte, it's dry. All you have to do is drop a little water into it. Some people even use a spray bottle of water and they just spray their palette as they go to keep it wet. 
So I'm going to try out some different things I can do. I'm going to take my clean, just my clean, any clean brush, and I'm going to lay down some water on my paper. This is just practice paper. So we're going to try a little wet on wet painting with gouache, just like we did with watercolor. Go ahead and get some paint with a tiny bit of water, but not much because you've already got water on the page. Any brush. This is your time for experimenting, so you can use any brush you want. I've got a small kind of rectangular, soft bristled brush. And I'm going to see what happens when I do this on wet paper. I'm getting a lovely watercolor effect, though it's definitely brighter than most watercolor, right? It has a lot more pigment in it than watercolor. You can try this out with a totally dry brush if you want. Let's see if I have one. Ooh. So this is a completely dry brush with pretty dry uh, pigment here. Here's what it's like on dry paper. I'm getting that feathery thing. Can, I don't even know if you can see that. So you can barely see it. But if I move over here to my wet page, there it is. And you can see the bristles. This is a fairly hard brush. So this is, this is kind of what you do when you're trying to use it as watercolor. Um, a lot of gouache painters use both techniques um, in one painting. We are not doing that so much with ours because this image really lends itself to the, the kind of like illustrative, simple, flat um, beauty of gouache. Um, so try out other brushes that you have and see what happens. If you add a little water to your paint, get that creamy consistency and use the side of your brush. So that's, that's watercolory. If I clean my brush off on a piece of paper towel and, and get less water, I'm going to start getting a more saturated uh, texture. And we can also try out edges. Okay. So grab a medium or smallish brush and lay down just maybe one that you already have mixed up. And just on your practice paper, try out just a couple of strokes. And then grab another color that you already have mixed up, maybe. And we're going to try out. these beautiful edges we can get. And this is why it's so good for um, illustration. So I think you, there's maybe a little glare on it in my camera, but um, let's see there, if I block the light, you can see 
how precise you can get and how totally saturated and it's going to dry flat. And um, it's, it gets this beautiful velvety finish. You just wanna touch it and you can when it's dry. Um, so, but what if you had this and you were like, oh, I don't like how hard that um, line is in there and you wanted to blend these. You can definitely do that. You could take the brush that already has one of the pigments on it and just start blending into your other color. This sometimes works depending on the colors and sometimes it just gets muddy. Um, that's part of what practicing will teach you. Um, so I didn't add any water and I'm just using basically a dry brush on top of on top of the other color. You could also um, get some water in there and it would give it more of a washy feel. And then another thing you can do is experiment with what it's like when you um, add white to a color versus adding water to a color to lighten it. So right now I have this kind of orange pink color. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white to lighten it up. And I'm actually gonna do this on a dip over here on a different, not in my um, pre-mixed color I have. So I'm adding just a little white, picking it up, not much water. Okay, my cat just broke into the room. Hopefully she doesn't jump up here. Okay, so and now I'm adding white to lighten it. Now try the same color with a different brush or clean off that brush and see what happens if you lighten it just with water like you do with watercolor. So I just added some water. I'm gonna get pigment off of my brush on my paper towel and add more water. And I'm starting to lighten the color with just water. So it might be kind of hard to tell on my page, but hopefully on your page, you can see the difference. Um, between the transparent lightening and the what's called tinting when you add white paint to a color. So there's a lot you can do, but I think our um, backgrounds are probably getting dry by now. Hopefully you have one at least that's getting dry. So we should start working on those. So I'm gonna move aside my practice paper so I'll leave it there so that I can, you know, try things out before I add them. So say I wanna see if it's the right uh, consistency, I can try it out over here before I start adding to my painting. So I'm gonna point out one thing about color in this. So this is basically um, a few shades of blue and then a complementary color, which is a shade of orange, right? Um, complementary colors, you probably know, but uh, it's the opposite on the color wheel. So it's um, often like a primary color with a secondary color um, or somewhere in between, but blue and orange, uh, purple and yellow, violet and yellow, green and red would be your basic complementary colors. So I would suggest Whatever you laid down, use some version of its complementary color because you get really nice contrast that way. So on these two, I'm going to use, uh, for my starfish, I'm going to use some uh, shades of orange. And on my purple background here, I'm gonna use a shade of yellow. But before I do any of that, I'm going to mix up a darker color to deal with these. I like to think of them as seaweed in the back. 
So I'm going to take a clean palette. I'm going to add some blue that I used already in my background. That's probably a good idea to use a little bit of the color you used in your background. And I'm going to add ivory black, but no white this time. Because this one down here, I used ivory white. I'm sorry, not. I used ivory black, titanium white, and my ultramarine blue. So I'm adding a little black. And I'm going to get a little water in there, which you can do several different ways. I'm going to use my clean brush and drop it in. And I have a bunch of dirty brushes now. Hopefully you're more uh, organized than me. And I'm going to clean a couple off so that I can use them. Okay. Um, if you wanted to, you could lightly pencil sketch. And if that's what you're comfortable with, you can. I'm not going to do that because I'm not concerned with this being a realistic, realistic, uh, I'm not concerned with mimicking exactly. So basically what I'm saying is I'm going to improvise and go with whatever happens. Okay, I've got a few clean brushes here. So I'm going to mix up my black and my blue, looking again for that creamy consistency. The black, um, just like the white, it goes a long way. So this is a very, very dark pigment, and that's okay. But I don't think I have enough of it, so I'm going to mix up a little more. Because I want these to all be generally the same color. And remember, if you mix up too much of it, that's better than mixing up too little because you can always add water to it to get it going again, but it's hard to mix up the same color twice. Okay. Now, I would definitely take a brush that is tapered on the end. This one is, and I'm also gonna use one that's smaller. like this. And I'm going to just lay down a few of these um, swoops, basically. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is, for now, just lay down the ones that I want to be behind the starfish. Because I can paint the starfish over those. Um, you can paint, you could do all of them, but I would prefer to leave the ones that overlap the starfish for later. Okay, so go ahead and take some of your pigment and just go for it. Get some of these going. Um, I'm gonna start with my big brush and I'm going to mimic some of what I see in my image, so. Now, if your painting underneath is not completely dry, you might get some color mixing going as you paint. That's okay. Um, or you could let it dry more. One thing that happens with gouache is that um, you'll find that it starts to mix when you're layering. Um, just stop let it dry a little bit more and you can go over it. Gouache is pr pretty forgiving until you start getting like a bunch of layers um, and it starts cracking and then it, the color starts muddying up. But you know, if you can manage just a smooth, some smooth line work here, basically, you should be fine. It's when you start working, working, working in one spot is when the colors start coming up and, and mixing. 
I'm gonna add a little more water to this, but not much. You don't want it to be too watery. And I'm gonna add some more of these swoops. And I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for some of these. So if you get, if you have, you know, a lot of this paint on your brush and you get these edges that stick up, that's okay. Just be aware that when you try to paint over it, you'll see the texture, any texture, and that's okay. I personally like uh, when you can kind of see what the paint does in a painting instead of it looking like a photograph, but everyone's different. Okay, so hopefully you've laid down some lines. I'm going to use the exact same color down here. I'm only going to switch colors for my for my uh, lavender painting. So I'm going to do this again, but down here and let these dry. And if you get pull like I did right there, that's up to you. I might just leave that since there's pull, there's that texture behind it in my background. Or you could just paint over it and make it smooth and flat and opaque. Is everyone doing all right? Yeah, it's this is a frustrating medium. <laughs> I see some frustrated faces. Give it a chance. Okay, maybe one more in the corner here. Now I have this blue black color already. And then I want to do the same thing to my third painting here. So I think what I'm going to do is add um, some purple, some of my lavender to this, which will, because this lavender has a lot of white in it, It'll have, it'll make it kind of gray, but then I'm going to add blue and black, just a little. You do you, whatever dark color you want to use, you should do it. I'm just add. I might not even add black yet because I already have some in there. So let's see what happens. I'm going to use the same brush because I am moving on but I want to keep the same colors in this mix. Okay, so I'm getting kind of a blue-gray. I think I'll add some red to it because red and blue make violet. I'm going to show you something. I had a, this is um gouache that dried up in the tube. I cut it open. It's still just barely uh, fluid inside. You can use dry gouache like that 
you just have to add water to it. So I'm going to add it to my palette here. And I'm going to need to add water to get it going. It's going to take a little extra mixing because it's so dry, but it'll get going. You can see it there. So I'm aiming for a darker violet than I have laid down. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm going to use my smaller brush since this is a smaller page. All right. I'm going to add some of these background seaweeds. I'm going to try to do it in one swoop. I got some pull. So I'm going to go over it. That's good enough. I'm going to let that dry. All right, I think that's enough. Just three. On that one. So I am going to clean my brushes. These are starting to dry. I still see a couple of um, shiny spots that are wet, but they're getting there. Uh, sometimes when people are working on these gouache paintings, um, and they don't want to wait for it to dry, they use a hair dryer. But generally, it only takes a few minutes, so I'm patient enough. Um, and I'm going to mix some colors to go on top. Some lighter colors like the starfish here are. So I, from the practice I did, have this light orange already mixed up. I just need to add some water to it to get it going again. Just a couple of drops. And Mix it up. Looking again for that thick but not too thick creamy paint. Okay. So I'm probably just going to use this as a base for whatever color I use for the starfish on each painting. So I'll use this for this top one. Uh, when I move on to this painting, I will probably, um, I don't know, add some red. So it's more of a, like a pink than a orange. And then when I move over here, um, I may see what happens if I add green or yellow. Maybe I would add more yellow to the pink and it would become, it would go back to this color and add more and more yellow until it's like a yellow orange. Or you could add green, which would create some, some brown and probably a really beautiful, um, like warm brown, but you never know. So, you know, you're just experimenting with colors here. The more you know about color theory um, and color mixing, probably the less mistakes you'll make, but that's how you learn. So if you end up with a horrible gray color, um, just start over. It's, it's no big deal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start working on some starfish. Starfishes, is that? Yeah, I guess so. Um, <laughs> So they have this like flower in the middle, basically. So I'm gonna lay down one of those wherever I feel it. 
Um, the only advice I really have for co this compositionally is not to lay it right in the middle, but to work around the middle a little bit. So my background blue is totally dry. So no problem, I'm adding this lighter color over it. Now, if I overworked this, I would probably start picking up some of that blue, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to confidently lay it down and let it start drying. I am going to do another. Now this one I might come right up against this dark seaweed. As if it's underneath it. And I'll do one more. Right, so this one I'm starting to maybe overwork, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. If it has streaks in it, and mine has a couple streaks in it, let it dry. If that bothers you, go back over it. We're just doing some layering. Now I'm gonna lay in some of these arms. And they really do curl across the page, a lot of them, so I'm gonna try to accomplish that. Um, you could use a bigger brush than this at this point. I wonder if I have one that would be perfect for that. Let's see. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna set that brush aside. I have to clean this brush. So this has dark paint in it, so I do want to clean it well. So this is a bigger brush than that one, and it'll be great for creating those starfish arms. And it has that nice tapered edge. I should not even have to add water to this yet. It hasn't dried much. And these, remember these, I intended to go underneath my starfish, these dark lines. So I am taking these arms over which seems scary to go over that dark color, but um, as long as it's dry, it should be okay. So I do see some wet areas still on mine, so I'm just not gonna go over those yet. So I'm starting with the tapered edge of the arm and coming in and flattening my brush as I go to get it, uh, to get the starfish arm fatter at the end or at the, where it connects to the body.
All right. So as I came into the center of the starfish, I started overworking it a bit. So I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to add some more arms. Check the time. Ooh, we are getting close. So these other ones that you started, you can work on later. We'll just get as far as we can on this one. So I'm just going to quickly add some arms. I mean, isn't it fun to do these curved arms? I love it so much. And, you know, if you can do it in one motion, I think it's best. You can cross over other starfish arms. So I think I went over a little area here that wasn't completely dry. So I picked up some of that dark blue in the back. Um, but you know, it's no big deal. We are adding these black um, dots to the arms. So it may not even be at all noticeable that I picked up a little extra pigment there. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush and as this is drying, I'm going to mix up some of my darkest color. So I already have this dark color, this dark blue. I'm going to add some black to it. And you know, since that's still drying, I'm probably just going to go ahead and come down here and start uh, adding some starfish here. So I'm going to add some red. Actually, if I can find it. There it is. Okay, add a little more water to it. So in order for us to share some of what we've done, we're not going to finish this all the way. But I think you've got enough here to see how this works and finish these on your own. It's basically just more of the same layering. Um, creamy consistencies of gouache with the appropriate sized brush, letting things dry, and not going for interesting watercolor texture, just going for this flat look. So I've got some basically pink mixed, almost like a hot pink. I'm going to do a little bit down here. It's my starfish. Okay. And quickly some arms.
going to mix up my dark like charcoal color so it's just a little bit of I, like I had a blue gray in the background I'm adding a lot of black to it so I'm getting this like cool charcoal color and I am going to find dry areas on my starfish arms to come in. You can tell if it's dry, if it's got a matte finish and give these little rectangular dots. Okay, and they kind of get closer together near the end. And the end of the starfish arm is pretty much just a black line, black tail, there we go. Now, if you wanted to, you could come in and outline these later with black or with like a dark gray. Um, I did that here on, on this practice one I did. I came in and I gave it an outline at the end. And I think it really, I mean, the color itself makes it pop, but when you outline it like that, it really does. And that's a really good way to practice um, your line work. So I think we didn't get as far as I wanted, but I gave you a good start, I hope, to keep going. And um, if anybody wants to share, I'd love to see it. Okay, who do I have here? Jan. Hi, Jan. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Ooh, look at that. That is nice. You got some... Um, the colors are so vivid and that contrast between the warm and the cool is really striking. What'd you, what'd you think? Medium. I mean, I'm, I'm in love now with gouache. It's <laughs> so easy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's particular, but it's not, um, it's not impossible. Right. 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 Had you used it before? No, this is the first time. I was afraid of it because it was like watercolor, and watercolor is not my game. So, <laughs> no, it's it's really good. I love the vivid colors. Yeah, me too. And when it gets all dry and velvety, you can touch it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Curtis, I see you have yours up. Yeah, I haven't put my starfish in yet, but uh, oh, look at that! I've got some seaweed going and uh, some kelp that I saw online <laughs> that I tried to get in. And so uh, I got a couple of different colors of the, uh, the kelp coming in. And then Heidi's gonna show you hers. Oh, cool. Hi, Heidi. Oh, look at that. Ooh, okay. And I think it's like poster paint. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. It's just like poster paint and it takes a while to understand what you're doing because you really have to let it dry and get it thick on top. Yeah. Yes. It Thank you. Lot. You're welcome. You did a great wow. job. Um, yes, that's a good point. It is a lot like poster paint. <laughs> uh, anyone I'll else share. sharing? Christine. Yeah. Oh, no. Belinda. Belinda, you're up. There. This is mine. So Ooh. it's, yeah, I, I like wash. So <laughs> you got this really is... far along on that. I, I was probably just painting the picture. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were blabbing like I was, right? <laughs> so. Good job, it looks beautiful. So. Have you used it before? Yeah, yeah, I have. So, um, it, it, I, I like it too. So I was just. Um, have you with, used it as watercolor too? Or just do you. Um, yeah, with watercolor, a little watercolor and just. Um, I did a gouache painting, one gouache painting. So. <laughs> so, and I really liked it. It turned out really nice. It just um, like you said, it's that smooth, flat, velvety finish. And it, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
override anybody else? Just start talking if you want to. Cynthia, I just Hi. managed to do one. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, any thoughts on using it? Well, I, I like using gouache. My problem is I don't mix enough at one time and it dries out on the palette before I get to do so I have I'm always is, is there a, a solution to that I'm always having to re-wet my mixture is yeah. that I, mean, I guess I have to work faster working fast or I mean I, the best thing to do is just mix up a lot and I feel like it's not intuitive to mix up that much paint because we don't do it with watercolor necessarily or yeah oil paint you might but um you just want to make sure you mix up enough and then spray bottle is yeah. really helpful to just yeah. squirt your palette as you go and keep it going. That's good advice. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Anybody else? No. All right. Um, just butt in if you do want to share. If not, I am going to move on and say good job. You guys did awesome. That is not an easy project or um, painting medium. And I um, wanted to tell you that I'm doing more Art Studio Central classes and they are um, the next two. One, the first one's in July, the next one is in August. Um, and there are three session classes instead of one so that we can work longer on one medium. Um, I hope that you would sign up for all three. Obviously, if you can't make it to all three, it's not the end of the world, but the idea is that we will work on the same project. So the first one is watercolor. The second one will be pencil drawing. Um, and then I'm probably also going to organize an in-person class if anybody is ready for that. Um, it wouldn't be in a small room, it would be either outdoors or in a large space so we could socially distance, but um, so we could sit and work together in person if anybody wants to. But I'm going to keep doing these online ones too, because I feel like looking at who is showing up, you, you have like your own little painting studio already and you probably like to work in it. So I'll keep doing virtual ones and then I'll offer some in-person ones too if you'd like to come to Central Library and work from something in person. Okay so those are already up on the website if you want uh, the SLPL website if you want to sign up and um, all right hey. everybody enjoy your day good job and thanks so much. Hey. Thank you. Thank you great class. Thank you. Bye. Really good. Thank you.